Hey guys, welcome back to the second tutorial in the series on Godot Random Generation. If you haven't seen the first one, uh, you should definitely go check that out. And especially if you're a beginner, as that covers the basics, this one will be building on what we learned in that tutorial. So yeah, it's really important to watch that. But anyways, in this one, we'll learn how to procedurally generate a room in Godot. So we're getting one step closer to procedurally generating a whole level. So let's get into it, guys. Okay guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is to set up the tile map and then also the camera. So this isn't really part of the tutorial, but I'm gonna just really quickly go through how to set up a tile map. So we get the tile map node, then we're gonna create a new tile set, and then I'm gonna import this tile set PNG into here. Then I'm gonna create a new single tile, which is 32 by 32. There are plenty of tutorials online on a tile set, so I'm not gonna cover it like that in depth. I'm also going to add a child node of a camera 2D because when we have camera 2D we can put current so basically what this says is that it's going to center on the parent node of it so it's going to center on right here which is 0 0 and that's good because now we'll be able to see a good view of the dungeon when we create it. We're going to make a script I just have it called dungeongen.gd because that's the name it doesn't have to be called that but right here, the first thing we want to do is declare the tile map node, aka this node right here, in our script because we're going to be editing it through the script. So what we're going to do is we're going to do on ready var map, and then we can declare it as the tile map node. So basically, when we do on ready var, that basically says that this is going to be a node that is in the scene that we are operating on. So we're going to use on ready var instead of just var. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go into the function function ready and we're going to start by typing map.set cell v which basically says we're going to set a cell or we're going to make a cell at this vector2 position. So the first value we're assigning in the function of this class is a vector2 position. We're going to keep it empty, which means it's empty is just like the same as vector2, 0, 0. So it's just a faster way of doing it. And then we're also going to assign it a value. We want to place this cell, a cell of this value, at this position. And that's what it sets out is. So we can run the scene, and it should place a cell at 0, 0. Perfect, right there. So the next thing we want to do is to make a for loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to do for block in for, and then we're going to set the cell at block comma zero. So what this is saying is that we want to iterate over this four times using this variable. So basically each time this is iterate over using a for loop, block is going to be one the first time, and the second time it's going to be two, the third time it's four, three, and then the fourth time it's four, and then since there is no number after four, it is going to stop. It's going to set it four times in a straight line because we're passing this as the x coordinate, and then we're passing zero as the y coordinate. So y will never change, but x will grow in the, in the right direction. Yeah, and now it grows four. So we can also go like negative block like this. And this should put it into the left direction. So now what we want to do is we want to make a square. So the objective is to make a square, but right now we can only make a line. So what we can actually do is we can nest a for loop. So basically we're going to write for, we'll go call this y in, in four. And we'll call this x now. And then we'll set this as y, and then set this as x. So what a nested for loop does is that it does the same thing, iterates over this four times. But now, for every time it iterates over x, it's also going to iterate over y four times. So basically, this will go 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the y coordinate, 2 in the x coordinate, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the y coordinate, and so on. So now we can run this, and it should give us a 4x4 four four square. Yep, just like that. Okay, so now that we know we can randomly generate a square, we're going to create an RNG class as we discussed in the last tutorial. So I'll go eat random. Oh my god, I cannot spell. 
render, render dot new. And then, so now that we have this variable, we can call rng dot randomize. And then we can call variable side underscore length. This will be the length of each, the side of the square. And then we'll go equals rng dot randy range. And we'll go one to six. And then we'll go for i inside underscore length. I inside underscore length. So if you don't understand this, you should go back and watch my last tutorial. I covered everything that we're that we just did right here in that tutorial. So go watch that. But right now we should be randomly generating a side between one and six for a square. Now we have five. Congratulations! You made your first random tile map in Godot. Right, now that you guys have done this, it is now time for the project. Okay, I am now going to give you the answer to the project. So as you know, we want to generate a rectangle instead of a square. And I know technically a square is a rectangle, but in this time, we just want to generate a shape that has two different side lengths. So what we can do is instead of declaring side length, we can go for our width, and then we can also declare a height of the rectangle. So now we have two of these, and basically these are each going to be a side length. So if we know that this is going to be the width, we're going to want to, we're going to, want to replace the, the side length for the x coordinate with it, because the width is always going on the bottom. And then for y, we're going to want to replace the height with it, because the height goes upwards and y goes upwards on the y-axis. So now, basically, this should generate a rectangle randomly. And it looks pretty good. And then you got a one by one rectangle there. That's kind of cool. Okay, yeah, so it's generating random rectangles. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. And, and again, I'll be releasing another one in a couple days. Probably not tomorrow, though, because I got a lot going on right now. But um, the next one, we shall finally get into generating multiple rooms instead of just one, and maybe even generating holes between those rooms. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you later.